Today I'm going to look at a new play damp by Up to Stream. This one was designed by Arlick and it's designed for the do-it-yourselfers who wants to create their own wireless music system using their own existing speakers. And it works very much like those high-priced systems by other companies that start with S and end with Onos. But it's all basically the same features at a fraction of the cost. And you supply your own speakers. This one's stereo. It's self-contained. Got an amplifier, power supply, and everything. Let's check it out. Today we're going to look at the new Up to Stream plate amp. Up to Stream is uh, a product that I've been using myself for several years now. I actually have three systems set up in my house. One connected to my Sansui 9090, another connected to my uh, in uh, my my home theater system, and I've got one, the mono version, connected to a speaker out in my backyard. This is the new plate app. Let's take a look at what's in the box. We're going to set this one up today. If I can get the box open. Most people when they think of plate amps think of subwoofers because, well, it's a plate that mounts on the back of the speaker. And this one's no different. Let's take a look at it. The unit features USB input, a LAN input, it has an auxiliary input, connections for both the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth external antenna, an output to connect to a separate sub-amplifier, AC power inlet, it's got a built-in power supply, runs off 100 to 240 volts, and you've got your speaker left output positive and negative terminals. On the back side you've got your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth boards built in, Bluetooth built into the board. This is the Wi-Fi adapter. Onboard power amplifier. Speaker output for the right channel connects directly to one of these terminals here. And uh, this is your power supply. It's got a built-in switching power supply, and it is shielded. The bottom cover is protected from high voltages. So you're not going to touch anything and get a shock. DC output goes through this connector into the Apple Fireboard. We'll look at the specifications on this little unit, and then we're going to uh, put it to use. Here's our internal speaker lead, so that's going to plug on to that plug. Is it that plug? Where does it go? Oh, it's this one down here. I don't know what this one is. Speaker, the uh, left and right outputs are right here. So the right output plugs into that one. That way when you're wiring this up to your internal speaker, you connect this to the internal speaker connection on the speaker. And then your speaker wires going to your left speaker would connect to these binding posts here. So it's a full stereo system that you would control from your phone. Specifications. I think it's 40 watts per channel if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 40 watts per channel into a 4 ohm speaker or 20 watts per channel if your speakers that you are connecting it to are rated as 8 ohms. Supports Bluetooth 5. Has a subwoofer output 20 to 300 hertz. And uh, left speaker output. 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi for your, your Wi-Fi and LAN RJ45 and of course Bluetooth 5. I've been uh, using up-to-stream apps, as I say myself, for a couple of years now. I use the four-stream app. It's flawless. I can use it to play music from my media server. So all the music on my hard drive, on my network, I can stream to any of them. I've got, as I say, three systems set up in the house now. This will be number four. And I can also play from Bluetooth from my phone directly by directly connecting to a specific speaker 
or I can play it through the Wi-Fi system. I can also play, I don't subscribe to Spotify or any of those other subscription services, but I do use TuneIn Radio, which is part of the service, which is free. I use TuneIn all the time and uh, works great. So what I think I'll do is I'm going to go find myself a speaker and uh, we're going to mount this inside a speaker. I just got to go find one that I can cut a hole in the back of. We'll mount this in the back. On the back here, you see the controls are pretty simple. You've got standby and source to turn it on and off. You can do that from your phone as well. And it's got a manual volume control so you can turn up and down the volume on the speakers. If your phone, say, say you started streaming from, uh, you started streaming from TuneIn, for example, and now you've shut the app down on your phone or, you're, or the person who started it on their phone isn't there to control the volume, you've got a volume control here. I'm going to go see what I can dig up for some speakers and we'll see if we can cut a hole in the back of the speaker and mount this little board and uh, it'll be a permanent stereo wireless speaker that I'm going to create today. I just happen to have two of these JVC dual duct systems kicking around. The other one's one of the ones I use for testing amplifiers and stuff. It's part of my test setup when I'm testing an amp. I have two of them in here for that. I just found this other pair that came from a mini system. Let's get to work. These are a 6 ohm speaker, so I would expect 30 watts per channel into 6 ohms. Because 40 watts into 4, 30 watts into 6 ohms. Looks like about 4 and 3 quarter by 2 and 3 quarter is what hole I need to cut in the back here. Yeah, 4 and 3 quarter by by two and three quarters should do it and leave me space for the holes. So I'll start by drilling some pilot holes. I know I'm going to get the YouTube trolls out there and the keyboard experts out there to complain about well the hole is not cut exactly square but the hole doesn't have to be cut exactly square as long as the plate covers it up. We can put the plate in and it will cover all the hole completely and seal the speaker. That's the idea. The plate amp fits in the back. It's held in place by some screws. We put some, a bead of silicone around here if we want to seal it up and uh, it becomes a sealed speaker with an amplifier. I've cut the hole in the back, let's get it wired up. I'm gonna do a coaxial splice with heat shrink tubing. So to do that, I'm gonna put a larger diameter of heat shrink tubing over both of the conductors. And then I'm gonna put a smaller diameter of heat shrink, shrink, heat shrink tubing over just the positive conductor on the side going to the speaker. Solder and then uh, heat shrink one over top of the other so here's a smaller piece of heat shrink tubing we'll put it over the positive lead we'll solder the positive lead first faster than any heat gun. Then solder the other wire. This is done of course to keep things that can vibrate and buzz to a minimum.
solder it up and then take the other larger piece of heat shrink tubing over both of them together using one of my kids confiscated lighters when they were telling me that they didn't smoke a likely excuse they actually think I bought it too they actually they actually think this is when they were when they were younger they're grown up now so they can make their own decisions but when they actually thought that I bought it for one second that they were carrying a lighter for a friend because they didn't their their they didn't their, their friend didn't want their parents to find the lighter because they might think they smoked how gullible do teenagers think their parents are do they think that their parents were not teenagers once every lie in their playbook is a lie from one of our playbooks when we were their age but they seem to think they can pull the wool over our eyes and we just play along right okay we'll plug in the uh the right channel speaker plugs into the bottom of the, the board right down there it does plug in trust me there it is it's plugged in we'll put the amplifier board back in and use an assortment of different screws that I've found in different just in my junk box we'll attach the screw okay let's stick the gasket material on it just sticks on the inside of the uh, the chassis here double-sided tape put the rubber around all four sides this is so that you don't en end up with any buzzing or vibration not that I don't think the speaker is going to have enough base to do that but since it is becoming a permanent in addition to this speaker I'm going to turn this into a Bluetooth speaker and find some place to use it. Okay. Now I can remount and try and get the screws back into the same holes that I took them out of. Okay, gaskets are on. Now let's reattach or let's attach the two antennas for Bluetooth and Wi Fi. There's one antenna there. There's the other antenna. We'll plug the power in and wait for the unit to uh, fire up. So when I apply power, the LED is going to start flashing white. It's going to go into pairing mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Wi-Fi settings on my phone and I'm going to look for the speaker once it's ready to go. I will see it show up as an available Wi-Fi network. It'll give us a voice prompt too, it should anyway. Entering setup mode. Follow the instructions in the app to finish the setup. So if I go to the Forestream app, there's my existing living room media closet and the motto stereo ramp. I'm going to hit plus for device list and it says go to your phone's Wi-Fi settings and select sound system XXXX to connect. So I'm going to swipe down and go to my settings. Go to connections and it says sound system sound system you are now connected to your speaker. Follow the instructions in the app to finish the setup. So now I go back to the app and it'll pop up. And it will then ask me to select my Wi-Fi network. Entered my password, connect. Waiting for Wi-Fi connection. Connected to your Wi-Fi network. So it asked me to give it a name. I'm just calling it the plate amp speakers. Boom. There we go. Okay, now I'll see. You see I've got... 
I had to reboot my media closet because I guess I had a power surge. I got my living room one, which is on my Sansui 9090. I've got my media closet, which is in the closet, literally in the media closet that feeds my home theater. I got the mono stereo amp, which is out in my backyard, hooked up to a single speaker. And now I've got this plate amp speaker. So if I go to the plate amp speaker and click on it here, and I go to say tune in radio, and uh, I can pick up local radio. I'll do that. I'll just pick up local radio just to show this off. What can I play without getting uh, busted for? Uh, oh, I guess I can play the traffic report. Looks like the ferry website doesn't want to load, so we're going to have to move on to the Virgin Tunnel report now. We'll start downtown with Barad Granville Camby. I can turn the volume up and down from the. Smoothly in and out of the downtown core. Keep in mind. Control in the back too. You see. Silicone zone out here for seismic and safety upgrades, and the viaducts are both wide open, so they're a good option in and out of the downtown. So volume's controllable from the back as well as from the app itself by just tapping the speaker icon. Change stations. Ironworkers upper levels highway eastbound start at Cross Creek Road. It does not open up to get to the south end of the Ironworkers. It's an absolute mountain the North Shore today. And then you get a little bit, bit of a break through the... Down the you see it, it's people like you that keep it turned on. Hey, this is Kenny Rogers, and when I'm in your town, I listen to ABC Radio Saturday Night Country with John Nutty, of course, nobody else. You know what to say. Okay, if I want to play music that's on my phone, I can just pick my music, go to my music on the phone, and for example, uh, I can just pick whatever I want to play on here. Okay. Pick anything on my phone, just like that. And, whoops. I don't have my uh, server turned on, like my... my my computer that has all the music on it is uh, not left turned on. It's used just for editing and what I want to stream off of it. But I've got a few tracks here on my my phone, as you, as you can see, about 5,000 tracks or so on the phone that I can just play at random, and um, it will play it. If I go into the add more settings here, right, tap up in the top corner, add more services, it, it'll it'll support TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Spotify, QQ Music, Tidal, Napster, and QO Buzz and Deets Deezer, which is the only one that I bother with because the rest of them are all subscription services. And the only one I ever bother with is TuneIn, but that's what these that's what these speakers, that's what these boards can operate on. All these all these amplifiers and preamps will all operate with the same services so a uh, big time big time selection if I go back to tune in and I pick say my stations that I listen to this is the one I normally listen to there's also settings if I click up here and go into settings where is it here there's a there's an equalizer it's on your settings here I believe here we go we've got um, EQ so you can adjust your bass and treble accordingly to how you like it anyway that's uh, the little played out and how it works Okay, now the speakers actually smell as good as they sound. I was looking, I, I couldn't figure out what the heck that stink was in, in the shop here, and I was looking at the speakers, and I noticed they were looked a bit dirty. I got these, I just picked these speakers up at the, at the uh, thrift store for five bucks, specifically for this project. And uh, I guess the person who donated them to this, to, to the, uh, 
the uh, donation bin didn't bother to clean up the cat piss that was on them. Whoever donated these things, their cat had used it as a toilet. Yeah, I was wondering, what is that funky smell? As I'm working on these things, I looked at it and it's like, oh, okay, uh, I think a cat sprayed these. But it got the, the ports down here, so I cleaned them up and now they smell as good as they sound. Be fine for a, a, a patio, I would imagine. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're working now. Go back to my, my favorites, whoops. And say pick a pick a radio station. Nice thing about this about this TuneIn app for, and I'm sure most of you are aware of it, but you can pick any radio station anywhere. So if I want to listen to radio stations from, you know, San Diego, I can go to San Diego and then I can pick which one I want to listen to. It's a pretty neat app. Of course, there's. Uh, You know, there's there's commercial stations as well as uh, internet stations, but I like it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Link is in the description. We'll catch you in the next one.